Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today we're talking about some of the most common summertime feeding mistakes to avoid. Uh, this is both for the health of your birds and also for your well-being and enjoyment because we know that the reason people feed birds is mainly for their enjoyment and why do stuff that is going to make it less enjoyable. We're going to talk about seed, we're going to talk about soot, we're going to talk about nectar, and we're going to talk about water, which are, you know, if you know me, that's one of my favorite topics. So, okay, so first thing, seed. One of the mistakes that most people make this time of year with their seed. Let's see, add to the state. There it is. Okay, first and foremost is people buy really big bags of bird seed, even this time of year, and then they have problems with storage. And then they have problems with pest and it, it becomes more of a hassle. So one of the first pieces of advice is don't buy such big bags in the really hot weather. Now, if you're one who has lots of storage space and you can store your bird seed in a refrigerator or a freezer and keep it good, dry and safe, then boy, this, this part doesn't apply to you. But if you're like most of us and we have limited cool, truly cool or cold storage space, uh, then it doesn't make sense to buy really big bags of bird seed, especially for you folks uh, down south where, the, 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 you know, it's humid here in Kansas City, but I grew up in North Carolina. I know what humidity is like down there in the deep south. And, you know, even just general humidity can cause bird seed to go bad. It can start to develop mold and get clumpy and stick together and promote the hatching of these guys, the Mediterranean meal moths or known by many names, pantry moths, uh, and they hatch, the eggs are in your bird seed. And of course they hatch when the temperature gets uh, consistently higher, like in the eighties. And then they start having, then you start seeing these moths flying around and they're from their eggs or these little uh, white caterpillars crawl around and your bird seed becomes webby. To avoid that, you know, I, it, it, and because of that, I always uh, recommend keeping your bird seed outside in aluminum uh, trash cans, not plastic. Critters will chew through them, squirrels and raccoons. And even in this case, I use aluminum trash cans, but sometimes if the raccoons get really persistent, I have to put a bungee cord over the handles or over the top of it if they get very persistent. But yes, in very hot weather, the, these will, the bird seed will sweat in there, especially if they're inside their plastic bags and things like that. So I, I really recommend if you're that kind of problem, definitely buy smaller bags of bird seed. The reason I had this picture up first is these are my five pound bags across the top of the shelf there, and then 10 pound bags and 20 pound bags. And then over to our left here is our 50 pound bags. Uh, but yeah, this time of year, it, save yourself some hassle and, and maybe losing some money because if a bag of bird seed gets really clumpy and you don't want to feed it, you're going to lose a lot of uh, seed that way. So storing your bird seed, being smart with it. And if you do get a, 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 into the Mediterranean meal problem, because if you if it's inside your house, these guys get inside your house, they're a pain to get rid of. One of the things we recommend and we keep out at 365 days a year at our store are these pheromone traps uh, and the uh, sticky, and we, we put them in areas uh, high up where the, the moths are likely to fly. Because in our, in our store, we go through so much bird seed, we cannot. Uh, avoid them totally. So we have to control them. But they don't ever get really bad in our store. But if they do, uh, I think twice uh, at, since I've owned the store, we've had to fog the store uh, after a really bad year. But we try to keep it a little cooler in the store and uh, they, they prevent them from hatching so much and also keep these pheromone traps out to get them. So bird seed storage is definitely uh, number one on my list that, that you're going to could run into problems if you don't, you know, like I say, you got to make smart choices with the bird seed. Okay, so the other part, the other part of that, and I'm going to put the camera back out here, is rotating your seed in your feeders. This is something people forget a lot, and that is uh, if they've got a typical, you know, like a tube feeder, what they typically do is every time they go out and just pour new seed on top of the old seed that's in the bottom of your bird feeder. So this has been in there for two or three days. Uh, maybe it's rained uh, and it's gotten 
uh, clumpy and you've just added new fresh seed on top of it so the birds aren't going to eat this and then that gets taller and taller and it affects that seed above you. So it's important to rotate your seed. Now the reason I grabbed this feeder off the shelf to show you is because this has the easy clean basis. The, the, I take the bottom off of it so I constantly pour my fresh seed in from the bottom put that back on and turn it up. So my fresh, I'm always rotating my seed inside of there. Now, if you, it's a different kind of feeder and you can't do that with the set, the aspect easy clean base, then what seeds left over, like in a multi-seed tube that the holes are bigger, you can just dump that out, keep a little bucket or a little uh, popcorn tin or something, pour the old seed out into that and then uh, mix it in with new seed and then pour it back into your feeder. Take the scoop and pour it back in to the two feeder. So you're keeping that seed fresh and you're keeping it mixed in. Um, now, if it gets really wet, you remember you really need to toss it. Um, I always say if a quick, quick shower, sun comes out, dries, you're okay. But if it's been you know a long rainy day and the seeds really gotten soaking wet in there, you really should just uh, toss it out and let the raccoons have it and the, and the possums have it off the ground and then clean it up, put fresh seed back in it. So keeping your seed rotated and fresh in your feeders is really important. So that's number two on the list today. So um, next we're gonna talk, the, the other thing that people, a uh, common mistake of course, is with suet. Um, I get people complaining about, oh, my suet cakes just got ooey and they're they're black and they're melty and they're gooey. Yes, that's because you have winter formula suet, the, the higher fat content suet that in high temperatures that sat, start, that fat is going to start to melt and ooze and it gets really messy and it's really nasty. But we recommend feeding the summer formula suet during the hot weather. That is the drier, doughier suet. Uh, it, it, you know, and some people don't feed suet at all during the summer and that's uh, totally up to you. But if you are feeding, a, feeding suet in the summer hot months, make the choice for the drier, doughier suet that doesn't melt and get ooey and gooey like this. This is Nutty Butter, our best-selling year-round suet uh, at the store. So, you, you know, a suet cake like that versus the high-fat suet, so the, as we call them. So that's a good way to trick. Now we're going to get into insects. Uh, so we're going past suet. Now we're going to get into the, the, the pest that can be problems to your feeders and uh, and your nectar feeders, uh, the, as hummingbird feeders and oriole feeders. Ants are always an issue. Um, if you have fed hummingbird feed hummingbirds with hummingbird feeders and you haven't had ants uh, get into your, your nectar, then you are an extremely lucky person because they usually get to just about anything. But there's lots of remedies out there that people will put on the internet. I'm telling you 100% the best, most effective, safest way for that for you is the ant mode. And that's just using pure water. I said, uh, you, you see how the cup is on the hook and then the hummingbird feeder hangs below it. You fill that cup with water, ants come down the hook. And as Joyce used to say, the dumb ones drown and the smart ones turn around and go back. So it is the most effective way to keep ants out of your hummingbird feeders. Uh, I know that there, like some hummingbird feeders have uh, nectar tips that you can put on them. Remember, ants can chew through that that plastic tip. Um, so the, the water is the cleanest, safest, and smartest way. And then again, your, your chickadees and goldfinches will land up there and drink out of the little water cup as their own personal bird bath, which is wonderful. Now, the other insect that gets to be really problematic, especially here going into late summer. Uh, and people do a lot of dangerous things to, to try to solve this problem. And those are the bees. Bees will swarm uh, nectar feeders terribly bad. And people ask me all the time about keeping uh, bees and wasps out of jelly. There, I know of no way that you can do that. Uh, so a lot of people quit feeding jelly this time of year because the bees and the wasps get to be a real problem. But hummingbird feeders are a different story. Um, and if you have a nectar oriole feeder, then that you can you can keep them out of that. Uh, you got to remember this type of feeder shown here, which has the bottle above uh, and the nectar, the sugar water drain comes down into the base to these ports. That sugar water is always right there at that port, and it makes it easy. Uh, for bees to get to that. Their little proboscis can reach into there and still get that. And another thing that probably that I had 
customer just told me, oh, I bought one of those hummingbird feeders with a bee basket on it. That's worse on there than, than, than on the other feeders. Yes. Part of the reasons is when the hummingbird is uh, sticking his tongue in there and lapping like a dog uh, to get that, and that sugar water comes out, it will drip on the bee guards. And then that's what the bees are getting off of those. It, it, those bee guards get saturated or uh, coated with sugar water and these bees take advantage of that. Then, you know, our, We've always talked about using feeders that are, are, are if all pretty much impossible for bees to get to or very hard for bees to get to. And these uh, test tube type feeders uh, are ones that they, they're bee proof. They, the bees can't get to the nectar because their proboscis isn't long enough. And of course, it, it nowhere for them to really land on very well there. And you, if you'll see, I don't know how well you can see on this picture, but there's the hummingbird's tongue darting to get the sugar water there and they're remember their tongue is longer than their bills and they lap like a dog to get the sugar water so these test tube type feeders are great at, 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 they work very well some people don't like them because you have to change them really often so because especially if you're getting real good hummingbird activity which you should start now here in midsummer with the babies coming in so uh but you know the the ones that i always recommend are the saucer type hummingbird feeders like this this aspect hummingbird feeder here and that this the the sugar water is at the bottom of the feeder or the bowl, and the the hummingbirds can lick with their tongue down to the bottom of that easily and get the sugar water. But the bee's proboscis is not long enough to reach in there. So your choice of hummingbird feeders really makes a difference when it comes to dealing with bees uh, and wasps at your hummingbird feeders. So, and and of course I always promise to talk about water. And yes, this is a dirty bird bath. And this is my bird bath. And, and I got to go change it. But I want to take this picture before I did that. Uh, go clean it up. So you, it, it, heat, sunlight, and biological debris like leaves and things like that getting into the bird bath makes the... Uh, the algae explode. And there's different kinds of algae. There's brown algae and there's green algae. Uh, but the, the best way to get around that is to just change the water regularly every couple of days. The great thing about this bird bath, which is my favorite bird bath, is that it's that high impact plastic and, uh, and it's really easy to wipe and clean out. It doesn't take a lot to, to get rid of that algae that's in there. So you just dump it off the edge of the deck there and clean it up and, and rinse it and dump it out again. But birds need that, that clean, reliable source of water, especially in the summer months and, of course, unfrozen in the winter months. So there are my most common mistakes that people uh, can, can fall into that they really need to avoid that clean bird bath, keep, keeping that fresh, clean source of water out there for them, dealing with the pests at your, at your hummingbird feeders like ants and uh, bees. And we, uh, then of course, seeds feed the summer suets instead of the winter suets this time of year. Uh, rotate the seeds in your feeder and keep your uh, seed fresh by not buying such big bags and, and don't risk uh, storing it inside where the moths can get in your house. So five summertime uh, that tips for you there to, to, for your enjoyment and for the health of your birds. It's a great idea for program. Appreciate you uh, tuning in today. Looks at we'll we'll do more of those. And don't forget to subscribe if you're on YouTube. Give us a like, give us a share. Until then, come by. Let's talk birds.